right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go, here we go. <clears throat> Welcome in. There's Angel Podcast. A daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures from right here in the Impact Power Sports Studio. Oh, boy. This ought to be fun. Then might be an audience member. Q100. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up, buddy? Nothing, nothing. Anyway, I'm, too, I'm just, like tied up to two songs. Either um, Night Ranger, Don't Tell Me You Love Me, or Call Me by the Dust Code. You pick it. What was the second one again? Uh, Call Me, the remake from uh, Blondie by the Dust Code. Oh, wow, that's interesting. I didn't. I, I haven't heard that one. Uh, you've heard of the Dust Code, right? No. No. Oh my God. Listen to them. Did you say they're called the? Did you say they're called the Mud Puddle? You the Mud Puddle? No, not the Mud Puddle. Just D U S T C O T A. Dust Coda. Dust Coda. Gotcha. All yeah, right. To them. Rock and roll. Guy's got a phenomenal voice, and my daughter's been listening to rock for 17 years, and said that they did a better than they did it. How did you, uh, how did, okay, so have you heard them on the radio station before? Oh, yeah. Okay, you know, I, I'm I'm kind of new here, so. Oh, good, what's your name? Eric. Eric, I'm Paul. They call me Shoe Dog. I know Joe and uh, j Bo and all them. Okay, Jerry. well, you know what, you know what might be a good idea? Because I, I had the phones on forward, so um, I don't, because I, I just finished up. And uh, Joe Mama's on now, so I I don't know why the phone call came to me. It should go to the studio, so give it a minute and maybe text it in or call again because I don't have access to it right now. No sweat, Eric. It's a pleasure to meet you, and uh, I'm sure I'll be talking to you soon. All right, buddy. Thank you. Peace, my brother. See you. Uh, I'm just happy he was sober. Or at least appeared to be. Uh, welcome into the show. Thank you to Impact Power Sports online at impactpowersportsmi.com. Uh, I have a great relationship with Impact Power Sports. I, uh, I had a, a conversation just the other day with them that uh, I revealed in yesterday's Patreon. There was an interesting exchange between my friends at Impact Power Sports, the almighty Drew, and um, someone from my old radio station. I thought about it. I'm not so afraid to talk about it now. It, it really isn't a bad deal. I mean, I'm not really going to get in trouble for talking about it, but uh, the sales manager from GRD... Chris says, LOL, I'm not going to say who it is next day. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel better about it now. Just shut up and enjoy this story, soccer loser. Uh, the sales manager from GRD called up Drew from Impact Power Sports and had some words. Listen to the story on Patreon from yesterday. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com. Patreon dot com. It's the uh, show from April 10th, 2024. Today is my son's birthday. He is 29. What? How can that be? It doesn't seem that long ago when I was 29. Like, I can tell you where I was when I was 29. July of 1999, I was at uh, WIMZ. Referred to as Little Fraud. Chris says, bang the drum song. That is a reference to when I was on WBBL, I was rehashing the story of when my son was born and giving the background about how he almost didn't make it. And it was at the somber point of the story 
when, uh, you know, I was detailing like the worst of it, whether or not he'd make it or not on his first day on this earth. And I, I accidentally uh, spit on the touch screen that has like music beds on it. And my spitball landed on Todd Rundgren, bang the drum. And I'm like, and so uh, we didn't know if he was going to make it. It was outrageously awesome. Just one of those things. I swear to God, I had a premonition that something was going to go wrong on that day, April 11, 1995. Because I woke up and uh, I was, I think I was staying home from work on the morning show at the time because, or something was up. I can't remember how, what the actual day of the week was, but I think it was a weekday. And I remember the song Lightning Crashes by Live was popular. And that song has like some real dark tones to it. It's about like a mother who dies during childbirth. Now, obviously, Diana Puber did not die during childbirth. Nobody died. But it just gave me this feeling of dread hearing that song. That something was going to go wrong. That's how I felt. I was like, what the fuck? Ryan writes... Especially the line about when the placenta hits the floor. That's got to be the only time uh, the word placenta has been used in a popular uh, rock music uh, song. You know? Her placenta falls to the floor. The confusion sets in before the doctor can even close the door. He rhymed placenta hits the floor with doctor closes the door. Shut the damn radio off. I got fuck this shit. Then Pooh Bear is sitting there on the couch and she goes, I don't feel good. What's the matter? I don't know. It just something feels wrong. We call the damn doc nurse. Yeah, come on in. We go in. They do ultrasound. You have no amniotic fluid. Your body has absorbed it. The child is in distress. We have to do an emergency C-section right now. Oh, oh my God. All that stress from being in a weird environment with no placental amniotic fluid uh, caused Jim to take a dump in there. And uh, somehow the, the, the shit that came out of his little baby asshole wound up in his lungs, which caused a lot of damage. So he had heart issues, lung issues, and just fucking terrible. It was I was actually told by the doc, your son might not make it. I give it a 50-50 shot. If he makes it through the night, we've got a good shot at this. So that's that's how I, I went to bed that night. Pooh Bear's recovering in the hospital. Jim was, uh, we had the child in Midland, Michigan, and Jim was whisked off via flashing lights ambulance to a larger hospital in Saginaw. And uh, I'm following the ambulance in the Corsica. Pooh's stuck at the hospital in Midland, recovering from a C-section. I got family here. I got family there. This is when my family still like me. And, uh, oh, my God. I never forget my mom's husband, Wally, shooting video when I'm like weeping. And I'm like, God, come on, man. Give me a break. What are you doing? Ugh. But that little fucker made it. He made it through um, the first 15 hours of, uh, of life. And away we go. And then um, made it through the night. He was good to go. He survived. The rest is history. The rest is history. So that is uh, that is great. Happy birthday, Jim. One of you might have been Kenny saying, uh, "Hey, Dad, can you help me with this science project for college?" Yeah. Okay. So, sure. There were plenty of moments. 
That were a little weird. Yeah, that happens. Uh, Allows me to discuss it here. The old easy dad, I'm doing a constellation or solar system project. Son of a bitch. Uh, Feels like yesterday when we found out that your son, Jim, the one who's celebrating his birthday today, was having his own son. But seriously, how is that 11 years ago? Yeah, it was 2013. Yeah, it, uh, it's all a blur. It's all a damn blur. Kenny says fraudulent, just like his father, LOL. So true. Have you ever heard that theory that um, as you get older, the time passes faster? Like if you're young and you're doing your thing day to day, there's so little going on in your life that it seems like you can't wait to grow up and everything is moving slowly. You're progressing through life when really the time has been the same. I mean, literally the time has been the same every single minute of every single day. How can it be though, that when you age, you start to realize that the end, that there is a finite amount of time. So internally, you start to get a sense that days are traveling at a faster pace than they did when you were a kid. I don't know if I'm getting all that right, but it then starts to become more and more rapid. The days seem to go faster. The weeks pass by quicker, the months quicker. And then before long, uh, you're out of your thirties into your forties and then your forties end and you're into your fifties. Holy shit. The fact that Jim is 29 is staggering to me. Uh, it, it's going too fast. Something has to happen to make this uh, less of a um, of a moment of feeling that this is just too damn fast. I should probably think about uh, not doing so much and slowing down, which was not the case yesterday. It's not the case at all, ever. Get done with the podcast. Uh, get done. Get done with the radio show. Do the podcast. Do the Patreon. Get done with the Patreon. I'm heading over to Stripe, an athletic field at uh, one of the local high schools, Catholic school. It was weird because the kids are getting out. All these Catholic uh, school kids in their in their uniforms, and I'm driving through in an old beat up pickup, and I'm like, oh God. These, these uh, moms that are like watching over the kids and the teachers as they escort them out of the school are going to think, what the fuck? Who is this creep? I make my way to the back of the lot. There's my boy, Timmy Mayer. Oh, hey, Zayner. Hey, Zayner. Oh, thanks for coming, eh? Oh, hey, buddy. Okay, yeah, we're going to get this going, eh? Go ahead and grab that machine and stripe away. What I love about striping with Timmy Mayer is um, he just he just threw me right into the mix. Oh, yeah, here, grab this. This is what you do. It's simple. A child could do it. No way, eh? So, all right. I got on it. This is how the day went, though. You got to check this out. Okay. He's striping for Shoreliner striping today with Timmy Mayer and his crew. Uh Oh, something doesn't look right. Something doesn't look right. Oh my God. How embarrassing. I look at that. Now, if you're listening to the audio podcast, you don't see it. Just know this at the center of a soccer field is a circle. And then the center line where, you know, when you start after a goal or the game starts or the half starts, you put the ball there and one team starts with the ball and the other team doesn't. What you see there is the goal box. That arc there is supposed to be a half circle. And 
it's a half circle and then a little more. There's a lot of boring reasons why I did this, but long and the short of it is when they, because they go over that area with little spots of orange paint so that you can use that as like a guide. And as I crossed that line that I wasn't supposed to there, I realized that there were no more orange lines. And I'm like, hey, you guys forgot to do... Like, no, no, hey, uh, you got to stop there at the line. Don't go over the line. I'm already two feet over the line. Can you get on the end of it? Unbelievable. So this is me striping for shoreline or striping today. I, I, I felt good at this point. With Timmy Mayer and his crew. Uh, Look at how badly I went over that line. Oh, something doesn't look right. Something doesn't look right. Oh, my God. How embarrassing. I am Sarah writes, just get a can of spring green grass spray paint. Go touch it up. Yeah, I, uh, I, I didn't even think about that, that that's something that they could do. But they said, hey, don't worry about it, eh? We don't even charge them for the extra pain, eh? No big deal. And uh, they, they were cool. They go, hey, you know, that's, that's not a big deal. Not a big deal. My God. Perfect example of how I think my days might just be going too fast. Uh, after that, got home. No big deal. Here I am. Another day. We started this thing on the radio station called Tournament of Rock, which we've talked about. And um, the first round voting for the next 24 hours has one of my draft picks in the Tournament of Rock, Eric Clapton, taking on a guy named Jabo, who works at the radio station. His, um, his star is The Edge, who sucks, okay? I can't believe he went with The Edge. This is the most intricate solo that the edge has ever done right here that's his solo from where the streets have no name this is his solo from pride in the name of love this is his solo from new year's day two notes his whole career has been that this is his solo from Angel of Harlem. Where the streets have no name. Desire. Bullet the blue sky. Uh, I talked about how the edge hates America. That's why you shouldn't vote for him. The edge pushed a kid who's a quadriplegic in a wheelchair down steps. I really wanted to amp it up and say that the edge loves Gretchen Whitmer because where I'm at up there, I mean, that would be incredible. Or if I said the edge loves mask mandates and hates Trump. But the boss lady said there will be no discussion of anything politically. And I'm like, well, technically it's not. So, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to push it. I just didn't want to, just didn't want to push it. Rich says, if you're so well known and you only play a few notes, you're one of the greats. I don't know. That's kind of, kind of like saying that Kiss is a great rock band. I mean, everybody knows that Kiss is not a great band. Never has been. I wonder what the voting is like right now. And the thing about it is, is uh, there is a quote-unquote roadie attached to each rock guitarist. And each roadie has a chance to win like $2,000 in cash and prizes. If their guitarist wins the whole thing. So there's a chick who's attached to the edge. Her name's Christine. And you can vote as many times as you want. 
So she's probably, you know, uh, spending 24 hours in a day voting for the edge, trying to pump up the vote. I encourage my guy to do that. This is a toss up because if you look on the voting, okay. And you can do this too at Q100Michigan.com. You vote and then you hit submit. Look at this. Now, uh, when I was finished off the air today, Clapton was leading. Of course he's leading. Now the edge is leading 54% to 45%. So it just goes to show you, this is a goddamn travesty. If the edge beats Eric Clapton, motherfuck. So I want each of you to spend the whole day today voting for Eric Clapton as many times as you can. There are str- there's strength in our numbers. I'm doing it right now. Eric Clapton, submit. Eric Clapton, submit. Eric Clapton, submit. Don't let this piece of shit, the edge, uh, advance to the next round. Rebecca says, I want to vote for Prince. Prince did not make any of the... uh, 32 legendary guitarists. Prince was talked about, but did not make the cut. Unfortunately. I love Prince. Very, very good. Uh, Patrick says, I believe there was a South Park that featured the edge. They called him number two because he was a giant piece of shit. Kenny's complaining. Kenny's complaining. He says, I want to vote for Dimebag. Oh, wait, he wasn't included. The whole thing is fucked. I can't get behind that. I think I've heard maybe one song, and I don't remember it, that Dimebag played. Not a lot of people know anything about Dimebag Daryl. I mean, let's think about this. When he got shot dead, he was playing in a nightclub in front of about 80 people. If he was worth a shit, he would not have been playing at a shithole bar with the worst security ever. The dump that Dimebag Darrell was playing in was such a shithole that any fan could just walk up on stage and shoot him dead. Why in the world was the so-called awesome guitarist playing at a pile of shit dive bar in the middle of nowhere? I'm just saying. I mean, these are all, th- these are facts. You don't see like uh, the edge getting shot, do you? No, because he's playing at a fucking football stadium. That's probably the reason why Dimebag Darrow got shot. I'll just say this. If he had been a better guitarist, he'd be alive today. Essentially, his guitar playing killed him. You can make that argument. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. He could do so little with the guitar that he was only able to play like uh, Bob's Country Bunker and the so-and-so casino in the middle of nowhere and maybe like a pig roast at his neighbor's house. Just heard from Kyle from a company that used to market on here. He says, can you... Call me at like 1130. That cool. Well, of course it's cool. So anyway. Chris in Buffalo says he could play at Hilljack Fest 8. Oh, of course. 
That's that's a hot take you've never heard before. Dimebag Daryl's death could be ruled a suicide because he killed himself because his guitar playing was so bad. Had he been a better guitar player, he would not have been playing at some podunk shithole in the middle of, in the middle of any town USA. All right. Pause in the action. Not only to go potty, but I'm my mouth is drier than Kenny's wife, ex-wife's vagina. So I will be back in just a minute. Stay put. Cow fade. Kyle writes to Kenny Dimebag. Dime is greatest guitar player and Lennon is a nobody. At least the great guitar player was shot on December 8th. Oh, I get it. The fact that John Lennon was shot on the same day. John Lennon wasn't a nobody. I mean, he, he didn't fucking play that great a guitar. No big deal. You have to ask yourself, what is the ultimate um, measuring stick of a person's greatness? Is it how you feel about them? Or is it their overall popularity? I would say overall popularity. Because there are a lot of artists that I don't like that everyone loves. And I would say, well, I hate them. But obviously, they're great to a lot of people or whoever it may be. Dimebag Daryl was great to all of the people in that club that night. So 80 people. So the statistic would be out of 1 million people, 80 of those people would be fans of Dimebag Daryl. Kenny says, go listen to the solo from floods by Pantera and then rethink your stance on Dimebag. Well, I'm not going, but I'm going by just popularity. You have to understand that. I may agree with that. I've never heard him. He's off my radar. Dimebag Daryl. But you got to understand, I like a totally different kind of music. That style of music in general is garbage. It's shit. So it's not like I'm going to, uh, I'll be listening to the whole work and, and then it sucks and then go, but the guitar's good. No, that, uh, that would be an upset to be sure. My style of music is, uh, way different than yours. You know, I have a, I have a normal sensibility. Yours is warped and destructive. Kenny's tried to make the point twice. That his favorite part of Q100 this morning is when Eric left and D. Snyder came on and played some old school Metallica. It was awesome. All right. I I bet. I, I mean, I like Metallica, I guess. Some of it. I'm just glad you were there listening. I appreciate that. All right. For those enjoying the show on Facebook, X, and YouTube, I'm going to have to say goodbye to you if you want the rest of the show. Download the Twitch app and search Eric Zane Live. Or on your desktop or laptop, search out twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live, and then you will be in good shape. You can get the rest of this show. Subscribe to it, follow it, all that shit, and you'll know when I go live and boom, boom, boom. You're, uh, you're doing great. This, what I'm doing right now, will become the audio podcast later on, and you can get it wherever you download shows. So if you're driving around, you want to hear something, uh, search me out on whatever platform that you listen to podcasts on, and uh, you are in business. 
And then, of course, my Patreon, where this week, Saturday, it's a Big Fraud Saturday. Starting at 11 a.m., Big Fraud time, also known as Eastern, we will start the day with another rip-roaring edition of Who Are These Free Beers? I haven't yet talked to Ben, so I'm not sure what he is reviewing. What this show is, is Ben and I review recent episodes of the world-famous Free Beer and Hot Wings show and provide our takes as to what they are doing and talk about it. It's a lot of fun. We goof on them heavily. And um, it's one of the more popular things that I do on my Patreon, second only to the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. Uh, This week in particular... We're call, uh, we focusing on free beers, short fuse. I was tipped off that it's happening more often and more intensely that the burn King will fly off the handle at people who reach out to him and say something that he doesn't like, usually pertaining to his show. And he'll drop whatever the fuck he's doing to rush to read an email and then they all like beat the shit out of whoever the hell sent that in. This is that whole, this is taken from that whole idea that when anybody says anything like, Hey, what's going on? I want to, whatever they, they offer critiques or say they like this or say they don't like that or whatever it may be. Greg usually says, yeah, look at the ratings. The ratings are higher than ever. So it it's, taken from that except he's getting more and more intense and angry with these people so short fuse free beer is born we'll be discovering or we will be discussing that by the way that whole business of ratings 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 there is only one market where that show does exceptional in ratings and that is grand rapids one the rest it's all like blends in with the rest of the station. So I, that's a very relative thing to say, but whatever. That is Saturday for another edition of a big fraud Saturday coming up uh, on Saturday, 11 a.m. with who are these free beers? And after that, the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast, which has a live audience on Zoom. You guys are great. Chris says they're in 11th place in Buffalo. Ryan writes, researchers delve into the pressing question. Is free beers fuse shorter than big fraud Zanes? Find out this weekend on a big fraud Saturday. You know, that's interesting. Whose fuse would be shorter? Mine, free beers, or Kenny? Kenny might have the shortest fuse of anybody. You know, and I think the worst um, type of person w- with a, with a short fuse is the one who, you know, is all like sweet and happy and laughy, and then one second later, boom! They just immediately flip on you. This unhealthy, unnatural turn of events. It's the fucking what a spectacle, Jesus. Uh, Linda says, I had free beer and hot wings on in the car earlier. Free beer said he apologizes a lot to people. And then she writes, what? I'll be anxious to, uh, to hear that. Look, if I'm not podcasting or if you find whatever I'm doing or, or not listening to me, absolutely listen to their show. I want you to listen to their show because when something catches you as, oh, EZ has to talk about this on who are these free beers, tip me off. I need to know what's happening. I was tipped off this week to some things. Um, I forgot. who Was it Chris? Yes, it was Chris. Chris is the one who tipped me off about short fuse free beer. And uh, now I'm, I'm building a whole show about it. It's fucking great. It's great. Uh, it's great audio to review. Uh, Kyle says smug beer said he apologizes followed up with him saying, I'm just kidding. 
Maureen says, I cannot stand to listen to them. They're too awful. I heard a discussion yesterday about what shirt Freebeer should wear for his live show. Like he did a whole show about what shirt he should wear. I mean, he did a whole segment about what shirt he should wear. And it's just like, what the fuck? It doesn't really have like a high point. It just kind of stops. They also broke down uh, popcorn buckets. I shit you not. It sounds ridiculous to say, but these are the things that they discuss in that fucking show. Holy cow. All right. I hope they keep it up because it gives me something to talk about. It's excellent. More and more people are uh, checking out the show. Who are these free beers? Makes me happy. Okay. Moving on. Uh, We got a scenario where a kid in Ohio was, I guess, in his neighborhood. And he had a toy gun. The cops pulled up and said, hands in the air. He did hands in the air. And then the cops shot him. Uh, All right. The kid is okay. The bullet hit him in the wrist. What the hell is going on here? I guess the cop has a history of overreacting. Let's get into this. reason for this officer to even be on the force. Uh, So let's just do the right thing and fire this officer. Akron activist group, the Freedom Block, demanding that Akron police officer Ryan Westlake be fired after he shot a 15-year-old who was carrying a fake gun on April 1st. The group citing that Westlake had prior disciplinary actions, including being fired, then reinstated. Akron PD says it started with a woman calling in to say someone was walking around the Goodyear Heights neighborhood pointing a gun at houses. In newly released body cam video, Officer Westlake is shown approaching the team. Where are you coming from? Can I see your hands real quick? Oh, 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 it's fake! It's shots fake. fired! Shots fired! It's fake! It's fake! It's fake! It's fake! The Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation is now investigating. After that, Akron's new independent police auditor, Anthony Fennell, will take the case. Fennell says he'll then share his findings with the city's Citizens Police Oversight Board, who could make a recommendation to the mayor. Okay, let's back up. A gun at houses. In newly released body cam video, Officer Westlake is shown approaching the team. Where are you coming from? Can I see your hands real quick? Okay. (laughs) The kid raised his hand that he was holding the gun with. Uh, In an instant, the cop fired. I'm sorry, but I would have done the same goddamn thing. Pointing a gun at houses. In newly released body cam video, Officer Westlake is shown approaching the team. Where are you coming from? Can I see your hands real quick? was so fast that cop drew so fucking fast the ohio bureau of criminal investigation is now investigating after that akron's new independent police auditor anthony fennell will take the case fennell says he'll then share his findings with the city's citizens police over look at there's the gun in the kid's hand site board who could make a recommendation to the mayor uh, as a father of a young male, black male, it's concerning that we have a young 15-year-old that uh, got shot in the streets. For this process to work, we real, I really need to remain objective, uh, remain impartial, and then wait until all of the investigations have been done and then look at all of the evidence and uh, make a determination from there. It w- I don't know. Uh, this seems open and shut to me. I mean, what do you what what do you expect? <laughs> Ryan writes that cop shot faster than Alec Baldwin on the set of Rust. Chris says, "I think we know why he shot right away." Wingnut says, "Blackmail playing the race card again." Yeah, I'm not, um, I don't know if I can get behind this being a a race thing. 
the whole neighborhood there is black, first of all. And all this cop knows is that there's a person walking around pointing a gun into homes. That's all that, uh, that's all that that kid or that all that that cop knows. Pause in the action. There's some breaking news about another black man. O.J. Simpson has died. Wow. He died yesterday. The news just hit. April 10th, our dad, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. I guess he it was quiet that he uh, um, had it. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren during this time of transition. His family asked, so you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. Signed, the Simpson family. That was posted on the O.J. Simpson uh, X feed at 1028 today. Let's see. If there any, I'm, I'm trying to find... Uh, if there's anybody who's weighing in, this is um, this is taken in, I believe, February. The juice spoke on his X feed, and this is what he had to say. Hey, X world, hospice, hospice. You talking? <laughs> okay, I remember this one because there was rumors he was in hospice. Hospice? You talking about hospice? <laughs> No, I, I'm not in any hospital. I, okay, sorry. I don't know who put that out there, but whoever put that out there, I guess it's like the Donald saying, can't trust the media. Uh, in any event, I'm hosting a ton of friends for, for the Super Bowl here in Las Vegas. And all is well, <laughs> you know? So, hey, guys, take care. Have a good Super Bowl weekend. All right, so he was lying there. This man's whole life has been a lie. All right. Uh, Linda says maybe he left a confession note. Wingnut says all is well. I got away with murder. Hey, X world. It's your old friend OJ. Some low-hanging fruit. Rich writes, the casket will fit like a glove. Cole writes, OJ jokes never get old, just like the two people he killed. One of the things about the juice is whenever he would post to X or whatever, um, the comments were just fantastic. The family has enough sense, though, to shut the comments off, I guess. That's too bad. Uh, Previously, he had posted on February 11th. That was the last time he had posted. Out, OJ out here cutting videos and killing it. Run towards the light. It's almost over. Thank God. This person wrote. Beautiful day for murder. Someone posted a poll. Who wins the Super Bowl? Choice one, OJ is innocent. Choice two, OJ is guilty. You'll never find the real killer if you're lounging by the pool and talking football. My God. Yeah, I I wish that the comments were open on the post of announcing his death. And so ends that. 
you know, if you're the Goldmans, you got to somehow sabotage the funeral. Stevie says they broke into regular programming on TV to announce it. Adam writes, if only Norm McDonald was still alive to talk about this. My God. Chris writes, OJ is tits up. Yeah, I saw one of you posted it. I think it was Tyler. No, it was Stevie. She wrote, OJ is dead. And I I was like, there's no way. I didn't even, I didn't even, uh, it just kind of went over my head. God damn. Well, good riddance. Fuck that guy. I think what's more staggering is that the amount of people who still, who still actually think that he had nothing to do with it. And I've talked about that as time passed, you got a whole generation of people like my kids who thought, yeah, that, that OJ Simpson, boy, I can't believe they did that to him. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, they, they said he committed murder. We like him. I'm like, are you crazy? Like my kids don't quite get it. And I have to explain to, or they didn't, I explained to them. I go, no, 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 you're getting that wrong. I don't know how, what the hell happened, but th- this man murdered two people. Kyle says, get Carl on the phone. What are his thoughts? Yeah, I I don't want to bug him too much. I remember when that whole thing broke. I was on the radio in Z93. And uh, I remember when the incident happened where those two were killed, but no one at that time was talking about OJ. It was was a few days later that the news started that he was being looked at, and we could not believe it. Because no one had ever heard anything negative about OJ. All he was, was um, a hilarious comedy actor and uh, an excellent sportscaster. OJ Simpson was the sideline reporter for NBC and he was quite good at it. So to think that the juice could have something to do with it. And then I was sitting there doing Cecil with a Y, watching TV in the studio and the NBA finals were on the Houston Rockets were in the finals against, I forget who of them, who it was, but, uh, they were, they had, um, the slow speed chase on split screen with the NBA finals. God damn. Megan says in fifth grade, we all got around a TV and one of those wobbly carts at Rosewood and watched the verdict. So weird. Chris in Buffalo says Z93 Z93 with the dude bad. OJ might have killed somebody. Terrible. Linda says I was in my office on the eighth floor when the verdict was read. My boss yelled, Get Linda before she throws herself out of the window. What a crock of shit. That jury sucked. Ryan with. I'm telling you, they need to reenact that slow speed chase for the funeral procession. Can we get an early 90s Bronco covered, converted into a hearse? Nick, the electrician, says, I was in third grade and the teacher had us watch the verdict. I can't believe it looking back. Chris says, I think it's been 30 years since you had to fake cry for Kurt Cobain. Yeah, because he died in April, right? Cobain? Eric, go on there and sound sad. Kurt Cobain is dead. (laughs) I actually fake cried. How embarrassing. Uh, let's see, Chris, that was on the fifth. Patrick says August, I believe. I don't think so. I think Kurt Cobain died in April, April 5th, 1994. Wow. Living the breaking news here with the Eric Zane show podcast. 
I think this is a great opportunity to um, talk with one of Buffalo's favorite sons. Stu McAllister. I think an opportunity for Stu to mend a fence with uh, radio voice Linda. Hey, did you hear one of Buffalo, the Buffalo Bills' greatest stars is dead? Oh, yeah. Which one is that? Uh, you got to guess. Legendary Bills player, dead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say since he said legendary, it's going to be Scott Norwood. No, he's still alive. Huh. Uh, I don't know. Jim Kelly? Probably. I think Jim Kelly might be more popular than this guy. But huh. no, it's not Jim Kelly. It's older school than Jim Kelly. OJ Simpson? Is dead. Wow. How that happened? Someone murdered him? Well, uh, I think it was he kept a cancer diagnosis to himself and his family oh. just announced. 1028 today, his family announced OJ died on April 10th. Wow, no more creepy videos, huh? Yeah. Hey, Twitter world, it's, it's <laughs> yours truly out here looking for the real killer. <laughs> I hope he's on this golf course. <laughs> you had to have been a huge Juice fan growing up. Oh, yeah, for sure, 100%. I love the Juice, man. I loved him in, uh, in, in the football games, and I loved him in all the movies. He was great, and then he had to go murder people. Did you think back then that he was a murderer? No. I mean, back then, you just think, like, all of these athletes are just funny dudes and, like, Miller-like commercials, right? Well, did They're you, all just yeah. goofy jocks. Did you think he was a murderer when you heard that his wife and boyfriend, or his wife's boyfriend, were killed? Oh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, that fucker's dead, so that's excellent news. <laughs> Where do you think he is? What do you mean, where do you think he is? Is he in hell? Oh, uh, no, no, hell, no, of course not. He's not in hell, he's in heaven? Yeah, probably, he just... probably. Okay. You know how it is. Uh, all you got to do is, is say you're sorry, and it's... At the uh, end? Yeah, it's all good, and I think he did, you know? Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, if he can get to heaven, then so can we. <laughs> I'm not sure I can. <laughs> Stu, I have at least one audience member who's very frustrated with you and not happy at all because you yelled oh, you yelled at Sadie. Oh yeah, I don't I don't blame them. I don't want to talk to them. They can go fuck themselves. Oh no! <laughs> My God, <laughs> that is fucking funny. Holy shit! Are you delivering ice cream right now? Yeah, I'm down here in Kalamazoo. I'm on my way to, uh, what is it, Boulder Ridge Animal Park Reserve, whatever. Uh, in, in in Kalamazoo? Uh, it's out in, in Alto. Alto? Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, I know where that is. That, so you're headed, yeah. you're headed back towards Grand Rapids. Yeah, I'm down in Kalamazoo, headed over there. Uh, then I got to go to Lowell High School, hitting all the hot spots. Yeah, that, um, that Boulder Ridge is a, is a fantastic place set up there yeah i forget all about it how close it is yeah. and then i'm always reminded and i'm like oh and then, and then i don't go it's very it's very, pretty new and um they, they do an excellent job i tried to uh i tried to get them on the podcast and they told me to go fuck myself why why would they do that well they didn't i just called and tried you know called oh. on them trying to get them to spend money and they they ignored me oh you want me to talk to them while i'm there no, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Absolutely not. I'll be like, hey, fuck faces. This guy, Eric Zane, wants you on the podcast. What do you fucking think, you dicks? Oh, yeah, of course. Hey, you know, that that's worth a try. It's worth a try. <laughs> hey, are you doing the Ironman game on Friday? I can't do this one. I've got a hockey game. Oh, uh, hockey's still going on? I thought yeah. it was over. Yeah. How are yeah. the Griffins doing? Are they doing all right? Or they're, they they're, shit? They're, they're better this year. They're going to the playoffs. Oh, okay. That's great. So you'll be busy for a longer period of time. Absolutely. Linda, I, Linda, uh -huh. your critic says, uh, oh, ha God. have Stu go there and scream at the animals. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I will. I'll take some video of it. Rumor is you have a live show this weekend. Talk about it. Yeah, I got the ones 
uh, Alza's Patreon episode on Saturday. So uh, people convinced me to do a live podcast. Where is so, it? It is at 1140 Muskegon Avenue Northwest. It's at a, a Knights of Columbus Hall. Is that in Grand Rapids? Yeah. It's right by Leonard, just south of Leonard on Muskegon. You know, you're going up against another uh, type of uh, show. Uh, there, there's another live show going on. Oh, yeah? Is it Free Beer and Hot Wings? Yeah, they're doing a Saturday live show. <laughs> oh, my God. Are they doing it at, like, DeVos? Oh, I think they're doing it at uh, 20 Monroe. It's a fucking, it's a big deal. Oh. Sure, I'm sure it is. I think it's fucking sold out, those motherfuckers. Ah, good for them. They charge. Mine is free. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm raising money, though, for uh, Fig and Friends. It's a uh, pet rescue organization. What's it called? Fag and Friends? <laughs> <laughs> Fag and Fuckers. It's called a Fig. F-I-G. Fig and Friends. Fig and Friends. Okay. Yes. Are they uh, Are they local? Yeah, they're in uh, they're in Grand Rapids. The, w- the woman who uh, she hooked me up with the spot, that's who she volunteers for. And so she's like, yeah, because I was going to give her some money. And she's like, oh, if you're going to raise money, raise money for this. Okay, so that's what I'm. That's what I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to raise at least twenty bucks. Okay, you know how it is. if Linda shows up and says, I'll give you fifty bucks if you let me punch you in the stomach for yelling at Sadie, <laughs> would you entertain that? I might. Okay. I might enter. I've met Linda. She can't throw a punch. Stu, you are uh, have been uh, commenting on social media about your uh, adventures on a dating app. Oh God, yes, many many adventures. Yes. Is it is it terrible? Yes, one hundred percent. It's terrible. Yeah, I. Uh, it, it gets dating gets no no easier, sir. Please never get divorced, dude. Stay stay with Diana forever. Yeah, that's the plan, you know. That's, that's a good plan, man. That's I just, a good plan. I got to take care of her because um, one of the reasons why she used to stay with me was um, because of my semen, but I don't have any more. <laughs> oh, you're done? Yeah, oh, it, it God, stopped. Yeah. I, I'm taking this horrible medicine that, that uh, eats my semen inside of my body. Oh, my God. That sounds awful. Yeah, so she can't. I mean, that's a, she really liked uh, doing an impression of a glazed donut. And now she can't do that, and so I think she might leave me. Uh, you just got to get some yogurt, hot yogurt, throw it in her face. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck to you, and uh, be, be keep it between the lines. It's shitty weather today. Oh, I know. It's atrocious, man. It is atrocious. But thanks for calling. Thanks for telling me OJ died. I had not heard that. Now I'll have to go look and see. Yeah, breaking news. Breaking news from Eric Zane. I appreciate it. All right, buddy. See you. All right, brother. We'll see you then. Goodbye. All right. Does anyone in the chat legitimately think that the juice is innocent? That he had nothing to do with it? I think we'd be hard-pressed to even find one person to think that he did not do that. The fact that he did get away with it. I mean, this is not a, a rocket scientist. And it's very, very difficult to... I mean, if you kill someone, there is so much that can point back to the person who did it. It's... I, I'm alarmed that he was able to pull that off. We do have one. Joe Martinez says he did not do it. The glove did not fit. So the key takeaway there is because the glove didn't fit. Well, the thing about the glove, though, was the glove appeared to have, like, been wet and, like, shrunk, you know? I don't know. So the one piece of evidence is enough to sway uh joe martinez he did not do it the glove did not fit we have found our one audience member who believes that the juice uh was innocent uh linda says his house is gone now and nicole's condo has a different address yes 
Um, Pooh Bear and I drove over there when we were um, during the kidney operation. You can't see anything. The house has got a gigantic, or the condo has a huge hedgerow right in front of it. All right. I'm sure we'll get into more about this as time passes because uh, the usual talking heads will probably break in on it and say something ridiculous or do something ridiculous, but uh, there you go. All right. Anyway, I was talking about that cop who um, shot the kid. So I'm going to get, I got to finish that story. But first off, I never did get rid of everybody who's on Facebook X and uh, YouTube. So there you go. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Hang on. I got to drink this. I don't know what my deal is. I'm going to have to take another break and fill this thing up. I drank the whole thing. X. Damn it. Facebook and Twitch brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. X brought to you by Blue Frost IT. Follow me on those platforms as well as my YouTube channel and my uh, Instagram, please. The uh, opening and live stream of the show, pretty much the first hour of it, brought to you by Jenison Pool and Spa Depot. They're back. Now, it's April. There's two or three crews out working that are installing in-ground pools. <clears throat> if you call in the next week or so, maybe two, you can get on the schedule to actually get your pool installed this summer. Otherwise, if this is something that you've always wanted, it takes a little time planning appropriately, get started with your first consultation. Head over to Jenison Pool and Spa Depot or call them at 616. <coughs> Damn it. 457-0500. That's 616-457-0500. One of the things about the pool industry, you got a lot of people who do install pools, but they don't have a brick and mortar store. Jenison Pool and Sta a Spa Depot on Chicago Drive in Jenison does have a brick and mortar store where you can get everything pool-related. Any type of upkeep, chemicals or supplies, consultation, you can go see them at Jenison Pool and Spa Depot. Also, when it comes to maintaining your pool or servicing your pool, they can help. They do mine here. They can do yours as well. 616-457-0500. As you know, your old pal EZ has a hot tub and a kidney bean shaped in ground pool. That's how we roll here. I'm not taking care of that shit. I got to have him do it. Call Jeremy out the door today. 616-457-057. People said, Zane, is his name out the door? Stand by. I'm like, no, 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 no. Uh, I call him Jeremy out the door because everything when you're talking to him, like let's say you show up there and you want to buy a bucket of uh, chlorine tablets. You put it up there. He scans it. He goes, that'll be, and he says the price. And after every price, that'll be $65 out the door. Okay. How much, uh, how much for this net to get the leaves out? $18 out the door. How much is it going to cost to get this new pool? Uh, this many thousand dollars out the door. Everything's out the door. Thus, he is Jeremy out the door. Word trickling in from the family. Madison. OJ Simpson died. I wrote, I saw that. Do you think he was innocent or guilty? Question mark. Uh, OJ is, uh, was one of the more popular people that's existed in our lifetime based on the murder. Yeah, he's right up there. 
Madison says, 100% guilty. I said, good. Jackie said, we all know where he's going. I don't, I'm not so sure. <clears throat> what a fucked up scenario. All right. Anyway, call Jeremy out the door about uh, anything pool related. Jenison pool and spa depot. Ultimately, he'd like to get you to consider getting a pool. This is something you've always wanted. Reach out to Jenison pool and spa depot. 616-457-0500. Jackie says he wrote a book called If I Did It, Red Flag. So true. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV, 616-532-6600. Or online at irvines.com, E-R-V-I-N-E-S, E-R-Vines, 616-532-6600. Take care of all your needs for any type of uh, repair work you need done on your car. And that could be uh, a regular combustion engine, a hybrid, or perhaps an EV. Thank you to Irvine's. ERVines.com. Don't just take my word for it. Look at the amazing reviews they have on their website. This is a trusted place to get your vehicle repaired. Veteran, lady, family-owned business. ERVines.com. ERVines.com. I don't know if it was the uh, the Times, but Megan posted a picture of her mom and dad recently. And there was a phenomenon back then when that picture was taken where you could be in like your 20s and women and men looked like they were in their 60s. And Megan's writing what I'm about to say. 1994, baby, they look better now. They look younger now. I cannot believe the way they used to look. What is going on there? How did they do that? I think your dad had like a porn stash and your mom was wearing like these, these knit pants with a weird old blouse and with a care and haircut. My God, the fashion sense was completely out the window back then. It's 30 years ago. You tell them right now that they both look fantastic. I mean, I would even watch if they decided to bone. They look like a million dollars. Megan says, I will not say that. No, I don't know. I don't expect you to. I don't want you to say that. You just tell them they look great. I've never seen two people look so different. I mean, you'd think 30 years that there'd be a huge, like, difference. But, I mean, my God, they look incredible. Ryan writes, let me tell you folks, OJ's death is a tragedy. Believe me, but let me also tell you something else. He's going straight to heaven, totally innocent. That's right, folks, innocent as can be. The crooked prosecutors, they're the ones going to hell. Boy, it sounds like if if I were doing an impression of Trump, the way this is written, this would work. It's, it's a disgrace what they did to him. A complete witch hunt. But mark my words, OJ's legacy will live, live on and he'll be remembered as the innocent man that he was. Is what I imagine Trump would say, Ryan writes. Hmm. Weird. How oh, that works out. Dumbass. All right. Um, thank you to Green Medicine Shop. They have a huge sale starting a week from tomorrow. As they celebrate 420. So on Friday the 19th and Saturday the 20th. uh, If you've never been to Green Medicine Shop. Put it on the calendar. Okay. You're running out of pot to smoke at your place. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to bang on the door of my friends at Green Medicine Shop. Head up to Greenville, Michigan. For either of these days. Friday the 19th or Saturday the 20th. 
But it's very important that you get there on both of those days or one of one of both of those days when the vendors are there. So the vendors are there from noon to three on Friday and two to five on Saturday, giving out free pot. So go there and get your free pot. You have to have a med card. To get it, go to the Green Medicine Shop website, thegreenmedicineshop.com, fill out the form, pay 90 bucks, get your med card. You're like, easy, I don't want to pay 90 bucks for a med card. Dickhead, you get a $100 in-store credit for that. But you have to get it through thegreenmedicineshop.com. And if you're under 21 in Michigan, you can't smoke recreational cannabis. But you can if you got a med card. So 18 to 21, get your med card like I just told you to do. And then go get your free pot on Friday and Saturday. The fuck is wrong with you? Get up there and get it. I know all of you smoke pot all the fucking time. Every one of you does. But you just keep it like quiet. You don't want me to know. But I know you all smoke pot. Or you eat edibles, whatever the fuck they are. I don't do any of that shit, but you guys do. <clears throat> so do all this shit over at Green Medicine Shop. They're awesome. This is the best place to get your pot. Period. And it's cleaner. Less yeast, less mold than that shit bag recreational stuff you smoke now. More details on the website, thegreenmedicineshop.com. I'm going to talk to Kyle from a company that used to market on the show in just a bit. Molly says, I smoke every day here, not afraid to admit it. Well, why? Yeah. I mean, it's just like having a beer. I mean, who gives a fuck? We live in a great world now where people can just exercise their, their uh, freedoms and smoke pot whenever they want to. I think it should be like you should do it, be able to do it like inside at work. You know, like back when you used to do cigarettes, smoke cigarettes in the seventies, you could just, you'd be at the daycare working. You're like nursing a baby, smoking a cigarette, not nursing, but feeding a baby with a bottle. Now you should be able to like smoke pot, like smoke a joint, like hanging out of your mouth, like the fucking Marlboro man feeding a baby. Some of you, though, it affects your sobriety, so you can't. Like me, I don't, I don't want to mess up my sobriety. I've been sober for decades. So I'm not one. And some of these people who quit alcohol, they're like, I'm going to smoke pot instead. And that's fine. I'm not judging you. Doesn't work for me, though. All right. I'm, I'm going to be right back. This is a two-break show. Okay. So all you potheads, I'll be right back. Oh, boy. Today's the day where I got to go and um, get a medical exam for life insurance. You know, uh, this is like, um, you know, in order to get life insurance they want to assess your health last time i did this was 20 years ago and back then they take the life insurance policy or the uh they they, they take your blood and they examine and first they have a questionnaire <clears throat> and um they're like okay um any history of this no any history of that no Smoker, no. That ends. I'm on the phone with these people. They go, all right, we got to get a blood test to uh, make you know check your check your blood numbers. I go, all right, sounds good. I hang up the phone. Just before that, I schedule my little exam. The same thing I'm doing today. Then I went outside and smoked a dart. Next day, this is and I, this is when I was getting insurance through my dad. My dad sold me the policy. 
Next day, <clears throat> I go give the blood test. And uh, two days later, the results come in. My dad calls me. He goes, you embarrassed the shit out of me, guy. What are you talking about? You smoke. I go, uh, you lied to them. You told them you didn't smoke and you smoke. I'm like, what the fuck are you looking at? I guess there is a byproduct that stays in your blood for significant time after you smoke a heater. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I didn't know that. So that blew everything up. And now the insured life insurance policy is like, they're, they're, they're looking at me very suspiciously. They, they want to cancel the whole deal. He was able to finagle and get another test somehow. I don't know how he did it, but I took the next, I waited enough time for that shit to get out of my system. And uh, then they took it again and there was no, they go, oh, and I, they go, well, what happened? I go, oh, I don't know. I must have been, I, I think I made up a story that I was at like Hooters or something like that. And I was hosting an event and there was a lot of people smoking. And I made up that story and they go, well, that, that, I mean, you had a very concentrated amount of whatever byproduct this is. And I go, I, I don't know. I don't smoke I'm fucking Ari gold. Deny till you die. Um, so I ended up somehow getting my way through that. So today's the day for that test. Now I hadn't burned. I mean, for this test, I'm fine. I haven't had a dart and I can't even remember last time I had a dart. Uh, but today's the day that they do that. Now, um, when this last, I had this test last done, I weighed 150 pounds young and not fucked up like I am now. So I could at back then I got like a ton of insurance for uh, with a super preferred category, like no money. Now I've got one kidney. I'm old. I'm fat as fuck. My BMI is through the roof. Uh, so I'm a, and my uh, cholesterol is high. I'm concerned that they might actually see, when they take the blood and run it into the machine or whatever to get the number, it's going to go, ah, 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 do not sell, do not sell. I'm a little bit worried about that. Take what the, take what it'll give you. Kenny writes, was this the beginning of being so fraudulent? No, I've been fraudulent for years. Are you kidding me? So that's today. Um, all right. Thank you to Chris K for sending me tips for who are these free beers. He sent me a couple more. I appreciate that. Let's reach out to our pal Kyle. From a company that used to market on the show. Let's see what he has to say. About the juice. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Exactly. Yo. Hey, what's going on, man? Did I call the right phone? You did, yeah. I'm uh, I'm not in the office at the moment, and I don't have the phone with me. So yeah, it would have just been ringing, and you would have been like, "Where is this fucking guy, dude?" Do you hear the breaking news? Um, no. Well, I never do. What's up? What's up? What's going on? <laughs> uh, a very famous former football player is dead. Oh shoot! Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta I gotta disconnect from the. Uh... Oh, that's okay. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I yeah, wanted yeah. to connect to the Bluetooth. I, I knew That's it was going to be right. fucked up. Very famous uh, former football player is dead. Um, a very famous former football player. Fuck. But, but everybody hates him because he did something after his career finished that made the whole world hate the guy. Oh, it's got to be uh, O.J. Simpson? It is. 
Oh, he, he's yeah. I guess he was pretty fucking old, huh? Yeah, he was so old. He's seventy four, but I guess he uh, he had cancer. And, uh, oh, the, and that'll get you. Yeah, this <laughs> this is one of those things where he didn't tell anybody, and the next thing you know, he's just dead. You know, man, he didn't tell anybody, huh? Well, no, no one publicly because the family just announced an hour ago that he's dead. He died yesterday of cancer. Oh man! Dude. So that's, that's good like news. The old- that's like, uh, <laughs> uh, that's like, uh, uh, which is not good news, but that's like uh, what uh, uh, Norm McDonald, he died. I think he was sick and he didn't tell anybody either. Yeah, what do you think about that? I, I say that's bullshit. I, you got to tell everyone. What, what you, you mean when you're sick or when you yeah. have like a, like, yeah, yeah, you know. I want everybody it's, to, it's time I, to say. I want everybody to make a fuss. You know, I want, I want, yeah. I want people telling me, you know, oh my God, it's going to be a, oh my thoughts and prayers. We're going to, you know, I want people crying. Okay. So you're saying if, if you got yourself some sort of terrible illness, then you would, you would tell people is what you're saying. Oh yeah. Cause I want the sympathy. Oh, yeah. yeah fuck <laughs> it, hey. And then I'm going to do it. I'm going to have a, like a 10 or 20 different GoFundMe's. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to put them all on myself and say, you got to support me and my, or my, and my family, or you're a loser. You know, you got to, yeah, hell yeah. you really got to lean into baby. that. Yeah. You, you need that cash and then make, <laughs> and then just make up stories, make up lies. Say, yeah, I've, I've got a chance to live. If you give me a million dollars for this treatment right. and then don't get the treatment, just, you know, you, you're, you're going to die. So then go just blow the money on hookers and blow. Dude, straight up, that should be one of our sessions is uh, because I've seen, you know, just by chance, like over the years, I've seen like some pretty questionable GoFundMes. But if we could find like a compilation of like fucked up GoFundMes and just talk about them to the crowd, uh, that'd be wild, dude, because I've seen some I've seen some weird ones, dude. Yeah. You know, like uh, there was one the other day about a mom who croaked and the kid. Uh, her kid, a seven-year-old, was having a, a, a lemonade sale to "quote unquote" pay for mom's tombstone. Now, you know full well that uh, it's not. They're going to take the money and blow it, and then they're probably oh, going to get sure. like a hundred thousand dollars because people are going to feel bad. Uh, you know, the kid's only raising a thousand or whatever, and in, the, in one minute, the kid's got a hundred thousand dollars. Oh my God. It's going to be great. If that, that's what you do. You need, you need to capitalize on your loved one's death. Man. Okay. So wait, so you say, so a kid, you say the, the mom actually died. No, yeah. you, no, no, no. no, yeah. She actually did croak. And then the, the grandmother of the kid putting on the lemonade stand, just seven year old kid. The gr- yeah. Oh, okay. Now, you know, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. There you go. You, you straight up. I mean, I've never, I've never died, you know, obviously, but, um, I don't like, isn't it like sh- like you pay for that shit? I guess you probably do got to pay for it out of pocket, don't you? For the but for the know, tombstone, there's like life insurance that would pay. Yeah, like tombstone and casket and all that shit. Oh yeah, that that's all expensive. You know, like when my my wife's brother in law died. You know the the guy at the at the mortuary was like, well, it's going to cost this much for a casket, this much for burial, and it's like big money. And I go, I yeah. go, I'm like, you got like a budget plan. And then they 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 had like a, a low cost casket, and then we just torched them. We just cremated them. Yeah, that's hell it. yeah. You know, two grand in and out. Fuck that shit. That's the uh, because I just thought like I mean yeah like I don't know but I, I figured like if if you know that's a big if but if that person had life insurance I, I always thought that like that's what you pay for the fucking shit with not lemonade money you know what i mean <laughs> exactly and uh, you know what what's interesting is the whole funeral industry is, first of all people that actually have open caskets and put people in the ground i was like why are you doing that what that is oh no shit out dude whenever i go to a funeral at like a funeral house and like you know like the employee is there like i try to like put myself in their shoes like you know that they're like i'm sorry for your loss but inside they're like i don't give a fuck dude oh no you know what i mean they're like you're paying me like a lot of money dude i don't give a fuck dude i'm just saying this yeah. you know and they they all, <laughs> they're always so fake when you walk in there they're trying to look sad and you're just like, uh, get yeah. the fuck out of here. What the fuck is wrong? Yeah, it's like, dude, you're making so much fucking money right now, dude. <laughs> I know it. Jesus. Um, Adam writes, I want to be cremated or donate my body. 
uh, but not to Gift of Life Michigan. That's the only place you can donate it. Are you are you, <laughs> are you an organ donator? Me? Yeah. Oh, fuck it. I'm going to have to check the back of my license. Oh, I don't fucking know, yeah, that's right. I uh, think I am, though. I, I, I don't see why I wouldn't be, because I feel like when they asked me, like, back in the beginning of time, I think I was like, yeah. Right, right on, right on. Um, all right, well, it's been a week that I, since I've talked to you, and uh, what is what what is on your mind? Is there anything in particular that's happening that you're looking forward to? What's up? It's, it's, it's been wild since we last talked, Eric Zane. So here's what the fuck happened, right? So I went to fuck I think I told you I was going to Canada this past weekend. Yes, you did. Um, which, hey, dude, Canada's a fucking shit show, dude. There's some, like, there's some weird, wild stuff going on over there. And I'll get into that in a sec. But, okay. um, yeah. But the, the concurrent story with that story is, of course, um, because cruel fate is a part of my life. Like the day before we were going to leave, um, actually shortly after I talked to you, um, I was like, man, I feel like I'm starting to get sick a little bit, right? So I did. I ended up getting a little bit sick. But I'm like, hey, we ain't got the fucking kid, and we're in a fucking different country, so I'm going to power through, right? <laughs> um, but anyway, I sort of I sort of like lost my voice a little bit due to, you know, whatever the fuck happens, like mucus on the old vocal oh. cords or whatever. <laughs> um, so that was kind of a bum. But uh, so get to, so in Canada, this is, it was freaking me out, dude. So we got there. Um, we went to Toronto. And um, I don't know. Like, I wasn't – I didn't, like, pay a lot of attention um, – like to Canada ever in my life really. But um I do remember like uh maybe like a year or two ago I read this article that was like fucking Canada is I don't know, the government's doing something and they're building all these fucking like housing things for people or whatever okay, to like bring right. them into the city. Right. So so we got there and I don't know if you I don't know if you've ever been to uh, Canada Eric Zane, but like for some reason, um at every town like they tell you the population. Like there's just a sign that says, Yeah, about fucking twenty thousand people live here, you know? Okay, yeah. And <laughs> so anyways, we're driving by all these cities that had like seven thousand people or like ten thousand people like tiny ones, right? And they've got these fucking sky rise condos, right? Like everywhere. I mean, like, I don't even know how many people you can fit in them, but like a lot, you know what I mean? Like hundred, maybe a thousand. I don't know even sure. They're huge sky rise and they look nice and shit, right? Okay. Yeah. Talking with the locals, baby, you know, just chatting with the, the old Canadians and they're like, yeah, they're like, Canada's fucked, dude. And they're like, they're building all these things, but nobody lives in them oh, uh, because I see. they're too expensive. And so, like, they're just, like, mostly vacant buildings, but there's, like, there's, like, shitloads of them, like, all over the place. And then we got to Toronto, and, I mean, they're fucking everywhere, dude. They're fucking, oh, but okay. nobody lives in them because, like, you, you could not afford it because Canada's, like, economy is all fucked up and shit. Wow, so, I, didn't, I didn't know this. Yeah, it is wild, dude. So I was talking to the Lokes, and I'm like, listen, guys, like, what the fuck's going on? And they're like, dude, we don't even fucking know, dude. Um, so we had uh, three Uber drivers. Um, one guy, the first guy, oh, I got to tell you this story. I almost forgot. So Blue, uh, Blue almost potentially, it didn't actually happen, but she potentially almost got us trafficked. And so here's a fucking story, Eric Zane. <laughs> so we were trying to hop in an Uber to go to uh, a restaurant. And um, I, you know, was being polite. So I opened her door for her and I was like going around to the other side, you know? Yep. And I opened the door and I heard her say like, yeah, you're the Uber driver, right? And, you know, I'm just like, yeah, it's the car. So I'm like walking around. I, I didn't hear him say anything. And then I got in um, to like my seat and like we took off or whatever. And then this fucking guy, he never talked to us once, right? Oh. So I'm like, oh, this fucking guy hates us. That's like my first thought. I'm like, oh, he's pissed. Like his, his wife said something. He's fucking, he's mad, right? Yeah. But then I, I realized I started paying attention. And this guy's listening to like, Russian rap and like Russian like there, most of it was kind of weird but there was this one banger dude it was like a Russian banger but anyway so I'm like okay this guy's foreign right um, but he never talked to us the whole time and then we got out of the car and Blue turns to me and she goes I was so scared that whole fucking time I'm like what do you mean and she was like I asked him if he was an Uber driver and he never said anything Oh, and I'm like Blue you gotta you gotta fucking tell me this shit you yeah. know what I mean like I just got in the car like thinking it was like an okay transaction you well know? I thought you said you almost got trafficked yeah like that's what i'm saying like we just got in the car no. and we didn't we didn't it could have just been a guy well and he could have just brought us to the fucking like a warehouse you know and okay. then we just chopped up into pieces so yeah stuff. right away you're you're thinking that that hey we dodged a bullet because that anybody could have we have to say something next time 
So yeah, right. But um, so yeah, so we had this that guy, but then we, after that we had a guy that just got there from Nigeria, and uh, he was like, yeah, I lived here for a couple months. He was like, Canada fucking sucks. <laughs> and then the third Uber driver was a guy from Pakistan who had been there for like two years, and he was like, oh, Canada fucking sucks, dude. He was like, they're all there because they want to be in America, but they couldn't get into America, so they went to Canada. Okay. But now that they're stuck in Canada because shit's too expensive, yeah, okay. and like they can't. It's wild, dude. It was a, it was a wild trip, Eric. Dude. Yeah, they're all jealous of you, man. You're you're living the dream. Here you are, come and go as you please, and all these fucking foreigners are stuck in that fucking mess. Yeah, it was it was quite wild, Eric. It was quite wild. So yeah, that's that's a testament to our immigration here in the U.S. You can't just come in. Everybody thinks you can just come in. It's hard to get into the U.S. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, for these guys, for these guys, and uh, yeah, it was just wild, dude. But yeah. you know me, I, I had I had a couple, I had a drink or two. Oh so I was yeah, just shooting the shit with them. Of course, of course. The only way they could get in is if they go around the back door and try to get in through Mexico. Then right. you can sneak in. You know, you get in there that way. Otherwise, you're fucked. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, that was so it was a good trip. Then you had a good time. Oh uh, yeah, it was it was truly it was nice. We had we had a good time. Um, we ate a lot of crazy food. I drank uh, a can that has an official energy drink, which is called Beaver Buzz or some shit like that. So I sucked one of those motherfuckers down. That was pretty wild. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> um, so back at it. No more trips for a little while. Did the kid miss you? Everything good with that? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Jamo was good. Um, yeah, he missed us, so we missed him for sure. But yeah, I, uh, I definitely, uh, we just don't have uh, any money anymore to go on any trips. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it chill for a bit. Yeah, you, yeah. You gotta, you gotta sell some more dumpsters. Yeah, I gotta sell those fucking tax suckers. Um, all right, uh, Arizona just enacted a uh, law or solidified a law that was like two hundred years old. That says that chicks can't have abortions unless if they're going to die. Wow. Wait, so you said, okay, you, you said it was 200 years old. You mean it's been a law for 200 years? Yeah, it's a or really. They overturned it. It's like a really Jeez. old law, and they reinforced it and made it so that if you're in Arizona, the only way you can get an abortion is if you're going to, if there's, if the mom could die. So oh, whatever fuck. happens. Pissed, huh? So yeah, if you're walking down the street and some guy uh, jams his dick in you, and you, <laughs> you get pregnant, you gotta have the baby. And yeah, yeah, that's wild. You know, dude. or if uh, if you if uh, if there's a baby in there and the doctor says, yeah, this baby is fucked up. It's only it's gonna be born with one arm and nothing else. It's just an arm and a head attached to each other. <laughs> You got to, you got to keep it. You, you can't, you can't have an abortion. That's like the new no. thing. And now everybody's pissed off because they can't go get abortions. Man, that's, uh, that's why, I mean, like, I mean, I was like, the issue itself is like something that I'm, I don't usually comment on because I'm not a lady. And also I don't, uh, I'm not usually walking on the street, just sticking my dick in people. So yeah. it doesn't happen to me, but like, it's gotta be weird for like, uh, like if you're the government of Arizona, like, wouldn't you feel like if you made that, if you did that, like, wouldn't you just imagine a bunch of people would leave the state? Oh yeah. That, that, well, they're going to have to. Um, uh, and, and yeah. Pro- so it's like, yeah, it's wild. It's like, why would, like, why would you want to do that? Like, why would you want to like get the fuck out of this state? We don't need that many residents. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> it's so bad that even the people who wanted this to become a thing, thing um their savior donald trump trump is saying yeah that's fucked up trump is the one saying it's fine everybody's saying it's fucked up so uh this is now a reality for all these people and it's like i'm with you i don't like i don't really have a dog in the fight so i just i'm kind of like i'm not gonna get in the way of that these women if they want to have it there's nothing more if you get a pissed off woman who wants an abortion she's gonna go get an abortion or she's gonna kick For your sure. ass. I don't want. I don't, I'm like, yeah, go get that abortion. I'm. I'm. Fine. Let's go kill some babies. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> oh my god. Um, all right, what did I send you today uh, for our Thursday edition of the Eric Zane Show podcast? What type of day are oh, we yeah, talking? Let me let me look skis here. And it was actually it was relatively lame actually. 
not, no, no, not lame. I'm sorry, uh, tame. I meant to say yeah, tame. Yeah, of course. Of course. Let me see here. Yeah, you said, yo, yo, tomorrow's a post nudes of your mom Thursday. You down? And I was like, hell yeah, baby. I said 100%. <laughs> Have you ever seen either of your parents nude? Oh, uh, man. Yes, unfortunately. And it was always like, uh, and actually, both of the times, um, and this might just be a testament to how my potentially Asperger brain works, but it, the both times happened on vacation when I was a kid down in Florida because, like, you're like out of your regular routine and rhythm and shit. So, like, I would just be like going to the bathroom and I'd like open the door and like there was my fucking parents. Like, not like together, but like two separate times. Uh, like, my mom was like getting out of the shower. Like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh and then God. like one time my dad was taking a shit and I was like, oh, fuck. And so, yeah, I, I, it's happened and it's not been great. <laughs> yeah, I, that's, I, uh, I've just had accidental moments like that. I've not actually seen them porking. Uh, thank God. Yeah, oh, yeah, me neither. That yeah. would be rough. I've dude. never seen that or heard that. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very lucky about that. Uh, that, um, but I, because there are lots of audience members who actually saw like um, mm. actual dick going into mom's vagina. And, oh, that dude, that'd be yeah. If I, yeah, and like for me, like I, I don't know, I might be able to handle that. What I could not handle is the dirty talk, though, for sure. Like, uh, like if my, like if my dad was like, "I'm gonna shoot," I'd be like, "I'm gone, dude. I'm, oh, I'm no. just gonna hang myself at this point." You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, that that's rough. That is rough. Uh, hey, as always, uh, thank you so much, and uh, you have a great rest of your day. Everyone out there, you do too. Love you guys and do see. There you go. There, that's Kyle. Kyle from an amazing company that used to market themselves on the Eric Zane Show podcast, hoping to have them back. Rebecca says it's all about making the mothers suffer. Uh, got rape, no abortion. Incest, no abortion. Yeah, um, you know, even more so. You know, you have a, a a lot of women that are like, my body, my choice. And I do not get in the way of that. That is that is the wrong hill to die on. This is about, and I don't even give a shit about them. I'm looking at my own quality of life. All right. Because if I'm the guy saying that, hey, yeah, hey, fuck you, you're not getting an abortion. I mean, my life is at is in jeopardy then. You don't want to do that. This is uh this is not something that this is not the hill that you want to die on. I don't give a shit what anybody tells me. And again, what I, um, I, I think abortion is the worst thing ever. Okay. But I, I'm not going to get in the way of telling people what to do, what to do. You know, that's it. It, it ends there with me, but in Arizona, you cannot do that now. It's a huge deal. God damn it. All right. I've been meaning to get back to this story. I swear to God. The 15-year-old in Ohio was walking down the street <clears throat> with a fake gun. Very real-looking gun. Um, one of the people in the neighborhood says, Hey, 911, there's a kid walking around with a gun. And he's aiming it at houses. Now, eventually, the kid says, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't doing that. Well, it doesn't matter. At this point, all that matters is the cop is approaching a kid who, from what he was told by the dispatcher, has a gun. Akron police show up. You saw this video. The uh, responding officer, he found the kid. I think he's a 15-year-old. Uh, in the area of where it was, it was uh, reported. He says, let me see your hands. His hand has the gun in his hand. And as he's moving the hand with the gun in his hand, the cop immediately goes to defense mode. And who wouldn't? The family for the kid, his name is Tavion, said, yeah, it was a toy gun. 
And I and I always love that when they say, "Yeah, it was a toy, it was a toy, so he shouldn't have been shot." It's like you that is not context matters, god damn it. The cop thought that he had a fucking pistol. <clears throat> This kid, who's obviously a fucking moron, said, it's a fake. I just wanted to be safe. Um, there's more to that. There's a, he, he clarifies that. Um, the attorney for the family said, at no point was that toy gun pointed at anyone's home, at any individual, and certainly not any member of the Akron Police Department. Well, look, at one point, the gun was in the kid's hand. And at this point, other than dropping it, and even that could be a problem, um, the cop is going to be very, very suspicious and concerned about his own well-being. He just wants to get home in one piece, the cop does. Kid reaches towards, or the cop reached towards his department-issued weapon, pointed, pointed to Tavion, fired a shot. Kids screaming, it's a fake. You saw that, it's fake. I promise you, look, it's a fake gun. Cop tells him to put his hands behind his back. Kid complies. Blood on his wrist. He, like, shot the gun out of his hand. That's that's great shooting. My hand hurts, mister. I wanted to be safe, the kid exclaims. Let's get a medical team. Fuck, man. Westlake said as other cops showed up. He tries to put hand cups, uh, cuffs on Tavion. Removes them, though, from the bloody wrist and calls for a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. Um, cop asks if he was hit anywhere else. He said, it's just my hand. Please, I'm a good kid, bro. I get A's in school. I play football. I just wanted to be safe. My cousin just died, he says, crying out in pain, explaining in the video that he had come from his cousin's funeral. So the, I guess his rationale was, I just came from a funeral and I wanted, I wanted to be safe. So I had a toy gun. So is the logic here that if you have a toy gun, no one will fuck with you. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The video shows still images with a circle around what appears to be a toy or, uh, or facsimile gun in Tavion's hand at the start of the clip. Another still shows the gun on the grass near the patrol vehicle and Tavion several feet away with his hands raised. Mm, boy. Now they're getting into the cop. What makes him tick? The cop's file includes a number of disciplinary actions and use of force incidents, which one of which has been deemed unreasonable. According to the mayor... Yeah, I always love it when the mayors weigh in. Yeah, uh, that what that does is it immediately kind of makes you look like you're on the side of well, you're against the side against your own police force. You might just want to shut up and wait. I mean, it's okay to release the video, but when you start, you know, pointing out, yeah, there was one moment that was bad with this guy. The file shows that in May of 21, he was suspended for 71 days because of uh, multiple incidents that year, including using profanity, using an anti-gay slur, and brandishing his firearm towards his girlfriend while intoxicated, as well as off-duty, extremely intoxicated incidents in Ohio and Florida in which he exhibited behavior and action that discredited the police department. So that's why he got in trouble. Yeah, it just seems weird to me. It seems like they're 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 tra- fishing for something to make this guy uh, be some type of villain. So I I don't know. No, I do know. I don't I don't think that that this is appropriate to indict this guy in any way, shape, or form based on the video alone. Cops uh, g- gets a word. There's a kid roaming around the city with a goddamn uh, gun in his hand. Kenny writes, cop did his job. How is he supposed to know the gun was fake? Whole thing is fucking stupid. 
He adds, kid should have dropped the gun 0.1 seconds after seeing the cop car show up and throw his arm straight up into the air while then saying it's fake. He would have been fine. Yeah, if this kid's so smart, what type of moron kid just walks around with a fake gun to quote unquote be safe? Tyler writes, don't forget this is in in, in Akron, so I'm sure we can look forward to LeBron James telling cops how to do their jobs at some point. Yeah, this one's going to be ugly. All right. This isn't quite like uh, the similar, uh, a cop shooting in Grand Rapids at that uh, cop Schur, Chris Schur, is that his name? who shot Patrick Lyoya in the back of the head. I was talking with a friend of mine who is um, skilled in hand-to-hand combat. He said, cops should be more suited to take someone down physically um, rather than what they do now. I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, when Lyoya went down, The cop was on his back, and he still did not have control. I go, well, what would you have done? He goes, I would have thrown a rear naked choke on him, and he would have gone to sleep quickly. They're both huffing and puffing. They're out of gas. You throw a naked choke on him. He's going to pass out, release the choke. Now you can cuff him. He goes, I don't know what that fucking cop was doing. They don't have the skills to act. They're not trained enough in hand-to-hand combat to keep them both safe. Patrick says, I don't like that there are cops out there shooting kids with toy guns. Yeah, well, you got to understand, the cop does not know it's a toy gun. To him, it's a real gun. You're looking at it through the lens of hindsight. The kid used bad judgment. Cops have a tough job. I think there could have been a better way of handling this. Okay. If I'm a cop, my number one concern is survival. I am not going to sacrifice my life for the law. I'm going to defend myself. And at that moment, he does not know that that is a toy gun. You and I have the benefit of looking at this through hindsight. Kenny writes, I don't like it either, but the cop had no way of knowing it wasn't real. Cop acted exactly how he should have. I know this. If I find out that my son's walking around down the street waving a gun, I'm like, you dumb motherfucker, you could have been killed. And if he got killed, I'd have been like, well, that's what happens. All right. Tyler says the only way this cop should be scrutinized is if the kid was walking around with a bright red Paw Patrol bubble gun or something like that, LOL. Kenny fires off. He's not black. He'll be fine, Eric. Joking, of course. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the idea that if he were, because he's a white cop, he'll get it. And that does happen. That is a very real thing. Uh, It just so happens that since the kid is black, he was waving around a pistol, fake pistol, gets shot, cop is white. Um, This will be that type of story. It's inevitable. We cannot avoid this. And that just comes with the territory. Was the cop from GR convicted for the Loyola shooting? Loyola. Loyola? I don't know how to say his name. I think it's Loyola. Loyola. Loyola? I don't know. Uh, no, it's still, it hasn't gone to trial yet. They're still waiting. I think he might. Um, yeah, it's it's tough to say on that one. I don't. It's tough to speculate as to how that would work. I think he might be convicted. I will then speculate. I think he might be convicted. Okay. Uh, before anything else, before we get to the asshole of the day, thank you to Tag Accounting. 616-301-9516. You've got four days to get your taxes done. And uh, Tag Accounting is who I want you to call. There's still time. There's time all the way up to the day. 601. I'm sorry, 616-301-9516.
Frank Fuss, My Policy Shop Insurance, licensed independent insur- insur- <laughs> insurance agent slash broker. Go to buyinsurancehere.com for any type of insurance. The realtor, uh, I'm sorry, the mortgage industry, the mortgage person of choice, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. Call Mario today. My vouch store is open. Vouch.store slash Eric Zane. Uh, you can uh, check out the products for sale. It's when you combine creators with small business. Ton of stuff for sale in my vouch store. Go there and check it out. Impact Power Sports, they sponsor the studio. Impact Power Sports, MI.com, their website. They are awesome. Michigan's newest Yamaha golf cart dealer. In beautiful Rockford, Michigan, along 14 Mile Road. I got to go over there and pick up a sign to put in the studio. They sponsor the studio. Impact Power Sports, MI.com. And last but not least, the one guy who thinks OJ Simpson was innocent, Joe Martinez. This dirty, dumb son of a bitch thinks that OJ is not guilty because of the stupid glove. Holy fuck. Well, anyway, despite that suit. Uh, sorry, despite that stupidity, reach out to him to get your uh, AC tuned up. 616-516-8579. That's 616-516-8579. Joe says he isn't guilty, always bringing the brothers down. That's bullshit. I love the brothers. All right, 616-516-8579 for Joe Martinez. Asshole of the day today. Yesterday it was the New York Post for hounding acting legend Gene Hackman. Today... And it's brought to you by TC Paintball, of course. It's OJ Simpson for killing two people. May you rot in hell, you filthy bastard. That is my time. The Patreon is up next. Thank you for being here. Have a good one, folks. Bye-bye.